Welcome to the Airgun Show. We've got another scope on test this week, the Optisan EVX from MTC. But before that, I'm going out after some release pen rats. <laughs> You can see from the state of the ground next to this fence that there's a huge amount of ratty activity here. So we should see a few venturing out once it starts to get dark. Now I've had a quick check round and unfortunately there are no active grain feeders here because if there were, that's where I'd expect them to be heading to, to feed. So what I'm gonna do is put my kit down and we'll put down a couple of bait spots instead. Right, well I shot home pretty hastily and didn't think to pick up any more bait. Thankfully, I've got a few fish pellets in my bag from my last outing, so I'm gonna dot a few around along the fence here and fingers crossed, that'll be enough to keep them still. I've also found the remains of a jar of coffee in my backpack, so we'll give that a try as well. Okay, well that puts us about 15 metres from where I've put most of those bait spots, which is a nice comfortable range for ratting. There are a few spots that I can't see from here because there's undergrowth in the way, but I should be able to see it just about well enough with my night vision gear to see if the rats are going out to feed there. And if they are, we'll just have to move. Well, the light's really starting to fade now, and I would expect that we ought to start seeing some rats moving now. So we're going to move across to the night vision camera.
Well, that one didn't take long. We'd really only just put those baits out. In fact, I reckon I could have shot that one with my day scope. And there's another one. I was quite concerned that it's such a still, clear night tonight that the rats weren't going to be venturing out, but they seem very keen to get onto that bait. Oh, there's still more rats there, but there seem to be even more moving just a bit further along on the bait spots that I can't quite cover from here. So what I'm going to do is up sticks and set up where I can cover those ones. I've only been in this spot for a couple of minutes and that's one from here already. I think that move was definitely a good idea.
Right, well there are still rats moving, but I'm gonna make that the last one for tonight because we're actually on a curfew here because they lock up the estate. And if we don't get going, we'll get stuck in. But before we do head off, I'm just gonna take a look at these rats because some of them have looked absolutely massive. Right, well we don't actually have to pick up here because with the foxes, badgers and owls about, any rats we've shot tonight will be gone by the morning. But I just wanted to show you how big some of these rats are. Now what's been happening is they've been getting very fat on the grain hoppers that are put out through the pheasants through the winter. And as you can see, they're in fantastic condition. Now what I'm guessing is happening now is because the feeders aren't being filled up next to the release pen anymore, these rats are absolutely desperate for food. And that's why they've been so eager to get out on what precious little bit of bait we have managed to put out this evening. We've had a good afternoon out after the squirrels and an unexpectedly busy evening out after the rats. I'm certainly ready to head for home. Some very big and very hungry release pen rats there. And now it's the Air Gun Show news. This is the Airgun Show News. Brought to you by the Airgun Centre. Big Guns, BSA and Gamo are adding their weight to the Airgun lineup at the UK Game Fair. British gunmaker BSA is the name behind market leading PCPs, including the R10 Mark II, the Gold Star SE, and the Ultra SE, plus BSA's high quality branded optics. Gamo has a reputation for combining affordability and reliability, as proven by the Brake Barrel Varmint Stalker Barricade and the super successful Coyote PCP. Other big airgun names attending the show include Armax and the Shooting Party. Visitors will also be able to see the latest night vision gear on the Starlight, Scott Country, Nightside and Thomas Jack stands. The UK Game Fair takes place at Stoney on the 22nd to the 24th of July. Keep up with all the latest announcements at ukgamefair.com. Airgun licensing is one step closer. The Scottish Government will introduce the new licensing system on the 1st of January next year. Scots will have six months to apply for a license for their airguns. Anyone with an existing shotgun or firearms license will have until their renewal date to apply. For anyone opting to hand in their airguns instead, there will be no compensation. There's a chance to win a BSA Ultra SE with multicam stock in the free competition in the latest issue of Airgun Shooter magazine, out now. The packed issue includes features on pigeon shooting and night vision ratting, a roundup of the best knives for game prep, and a first look at the Virac HW110. The Air Arms, TDR and BSA Ultra SE go up against each other in the head-to-head -head test. There's a performance comparison between lead and lead-free ammo, workshop and range-finding tutorials, and much more. And finally, shooting has a right royal supporter. It's Prince William. The Prince has won praise from Basque for his support of shooting's role in conservation in the UK and abroad. Basque's chief executive Richard Alley said Prince William is a champion of conservation and his recent comments about commercial shooting show a deep understanding of the benefits of shooting. Properly regulated shooting plainly has a valuable role in the protection of habitats and wildlife. That was the Airgun Show News. We've had several requests to feature the Optisan EVX scope from MTC in a review, so here it is. It's available in specifications from 3 to 12 by 44 right through to 6 to 24 by 50, and prices start at £279. I've got the 4 to 16 by 44i variant here, which has a retail price of £289. Apart from being a very good looking scope, the EVX is also very well built and it certainly feels solid. It's waterproof, fog proof and shock proof. The large 30mm tube helps to improve light transmission and that's enhanced by the multi-coated lenses to produce a bright, sharp sight picture. 
The 50 mm objective lens models must really suck in the light because the smaller 44 mm version that I've got here still does a very good job, even in poor light conditions. I actually prefer the smaller proportions of this model, which measures just over 35 centimeters and tips the scales at 760 grams. This scope's four to 16 times zoom range is brilliant for air gun shooting. On high magnification, you can see exactly when the parallax comes into focus for accurate range estimation. And it's always handy to be able to wind down the magnification for improved light transmission at dawn and dusk or when you need a wide field of view for fast target acquisition. The design of the zoom ring makes for a very good grip. It turns smoothly but is also tight enough that you don't have to worry about it creeping if it snags on anything. This model only shows some of the numbers on the zoom range, but it's easy enough to estimate where the other settings are relative to their position. The scope boasts side wheel parallax adjustment. It turns very smoothly and focuses right down to just 10 yards. This one is only marked for 10 and 100 yards, but that's no bad thing because you can mark it with your own exact calibrations. It's also supplied with a three inch parallax side wheel add-on. That's not marked either, so you can calibrate it yourself. The target turrets make for fast, precise adjustment. Lift the thumb wheel and each positive click adjusts the point of impact one quarter of an inch at 100 yards, or one sixteenth of an inch at 25 yards. Once you've got it zeroed, you just push the turrets back down to lock them securely in place. And if you slacken off the locking rings, you can even reset the dials back to zero once you've got the scope set up. A very nice touch. This EVX features the MH10 reticle. I have to say that I'm not usually a fan of elaborate reticles, but this one is actually very impressive. It provides a wide range of useful aiming points without making the sight picture look too busy or complicated. And the fast focus eye bell at the back of the scope means you can quickly adjust it to exactly suit your eye. The EVX eye scopes feature an illuminated reticle for improved contrast when shooting against dark backgrounds. There are six clearly defined power settings selected via the dial on the side of the scope. This EVX package comes with some useful extras including a three inch sunshade to keep glare off the objective lens and to stop it from flashing in the sun. You also get screw in front and rear flip up lens covers, which are great for keeping dust and dirt off the lenses in the field and in storage. The EVX range includes scopes with first and second focal plane reticles. And with prices starting at well under 300 pounds, you certainly get a lot of top end features for your money. But this scope is about much more than gadgets and gizmos. It's a very well built piece of kit with excellent optical quality and will do just about whatever you ask of it, whether in the hunting field or on the target range. And it's even covered by a five year warranty if registered within 30 days of purchase. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport. Yeah.